What is it now? Haven't Grey Wardens asked more than enough of the Circle? I simply came to deliver a message from the revered mother, Sir Mage. She desires your presence. What her reverence desires is of no concern to me. I am busy helping the Grey Wardens, by the King's orders, I might add. Should I have asked her to write a note? Tell her I will not be harassed in this manner. Yes, I was harassing you by delivering a message. Your glibness does you no credit. Here I thought we were getting along so well. I was even going to name one of my children after you. The Grumpy One. Enough. I will speak to the woman if I must. Get out of my way, fool. You know, one good thing about the Blight is how it brings people together. It's like a party. We could all stand in a circle and hold hands. That would give the Darkspawn something to think about. Wait, we haven't met, have we? I don't suppose you happen to be another mage. Hardly. I just like to know my chances of being turned into a toad at any given moment. Wait, I do know who you are. You're Duncan's new recruit. The elf from Denerim. I should have recognized you right away. I apologize. Good. You didn't exactly catch me at my finest with the mage there. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Alistair, the new Grey Warden. Though I guess you knew that. As the junior member of the Order, I'll be accompanying you when you prepare for the joining. Right, that was the name. You know, it just occurred to me that there have never been many women in the Grey Wardens. I wonder why that is. I'm getting that impression. So I'm curious. Have you ever actually encountered Darkspawn before? When I fought my first one, I wasn't prepared for how monstrous it was. I can't say I'm looking forward to encountering another. Anyhow, whenever you're ready, let's get back to Duncan. I imagine he's eager to get things started. You do? Huh, that's a switch. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, lead on. Yes? You first. Did you want to become a Grey Warden? You asked in general. I'm asking in particular. Conscripted, huh? Hmm. Duncan rarely needs to do that, I hear. I was conscripted. Not that I didn't want to join. I was training as a Templar for the Chantry before Duncan recruited me. That was about six months ago. Far from it. I never wanted to be a Templar anyway. Duncan saw I wasn't happy, and figured my training against mages could double for fighting Darkspawn. Now, here I stand, a proud Grey Warden. The Grand Cleric wouldn't have let me go if Duncan never forced the issue. I'll always be grateful to him. I spent years in that Chantry, hopelessly resigned to my fate. Duncan was the first person who cared what I wanted. He risked a lot of trouble with the Grand Cleric to help me. It just wasn't for me. I believe in the Maker well enough, but I never wanted to devote my life to the Chantry. Then let's get a move on, shall we? Yes? What about? Of course. You want the Chantry's version or the truth? <laughs> they seldom are. According to the Chant of Light, the Maker imprisoned the old gods underground long ago as punishment for tricking mankind into worshipping them. The old gods still whispered to some men and taught them magic. These men became the Magisters of the Tevinta Empire. The Magisters used their gift to enter the Golden City, tainting it and themselves. They were cast out by the Maker and became the first Darkspawn. They fled underground, bringing their taint to their gods. The tainted old gods were the Archdemons who rose from their prisons and led the Darkspawn against the world. The truth is we don't really know. They come up from the ground, and that's as far as we've gotten. Yes, and it nearly wiped us out. When defeated, the Darkspawn flee back underground and seek out another old god to taint, thus bringing another blight. We haven't seen it yet. People are beginning to think this is just an unusually large Darkspawn raid without an Archdemon to unify them. 
But seriously, the Archdemon could be in the wilds or underground. It could be hiding. Just because it hasn't shown itself doesn't mean it isn't out there. They've controlled the deep roads ever since they defeated the Dwarven Kingdoms. Even if we invaded, we can only chase them so far. The Grey Wardens killed so many Darkspawn by the end of the Last Blight. People decided they were gone for good. The old gods were dragons. So the stories say. Big ones. Intelligent, even. The Tevinter Empire had big statues of them. Each dragon had a name and a place in the cosmos. It's all very intricate. The Archdemons may not be the old gods, but they're definitely dragons. Of course. We chop off the snake's head. It's the only way. According to texts, the most famous Grey Warden leader, Garahel, killed the Archdemon Underal in personal combat at the Battle of Aesley to end the Last Blight. Without the Archdemon to command them, the Darkspawn flee back underground. The Grey Wardens keep watch. We feel the Darkspawn when they come. You'll understand after the joining, if you... S well, you'll understand. Not to mention people start to notice when Darkspawn pour out of the wilds and taint everything around them. Just a guess. Thousands? Tens of thousands? They've had centuries to build up their numbers. You want to ask me about something else? There's not a lot I can tell you. We go and collect Darkspawn blood. And then you'll hear everything. I... Look... I can't tell you much, all right? The joining is very unpleasant. I wish I could forget it, but I can't. I don't envy what you're going to have to go through. You learn why it's secret. The joining is the price we pay, all of us, for being able to defeat the Darkspawn. You can't refuse. I guess you could try. Duncan doesn't usually recruit cowards. If becoming a Grey Warden were easy, we wouldn't recruit the best. You want to ask me about something else? So I imagine. What would you like to know? The Grey Wardens are warriors without equal. Darkspawn threatened to destroy the world four times over, each time the Grey Wardens led mankind to victory. Nobody knows more about Darkspawn. And nobody's better equipped to deal with them. You'll see. Trust me. I don't know if I'd go that far. Duncan says the Grey Wardens do whatever is necessary to protect mankind from Darkspawn. That means some pretty extreme things. Whatever it takes to bring victory. Well, let's see. Surely you've heard of Weisalpt Fortress? The Great Airy carved into the White Cliffs far off in the Anderfels? That's where the Grey Wardens once kept their griffins. The griffins died out, however, and our numbers have dwindled since the last blight. There's only a handful left in Ferelden. A few more in other nations. The others are camped with the King's soldiers in the valley. The King's given us a position of honor at the Vanguard, despite our small numbers. I think Kaelin is actually excited to ride into battle with us. Maybe he thinks that's what his father would have done. King Marek, Kaelin's father, reaffirmed the power the Grey Wardens were given during the Blights. In practice, we can't conscript too often without hurting our cause. We were exiled from Ferelden once. Best not to let that happen again. You want to ask me about something else? The one tomorrow. I'll tell you, it's Tan Loghain we should be looking to win it, not the King. Kaelin just wants his place in history. The Tairn is planning the strategy. Uh, that's my opinion, anyway. I guess I should be thankful the King favors us Grey Wardens. But I know who's keeping the lid on the pot. You know, that's a good question. The other Grey Wardens are riding into battle with the King. I don't know if you'll be with them. We're at the edge of the Korkari Wilds, the Eye of the Blight Storm, right where the Horde will be coming. Ostagar itself is an excellent defensive position. The Wilders were pushed back from here time and again in ancient days. 
I'm sure Tern Loghain has the battle planned to the last detail. Still, no blight has ever been defeated with so little cost. If we don't break the Horde here, Duncan says it will spread until it engulfs all of Ferelden. Then it will take an alliance of nations to fight it. Which would be bad. Neither the King nor the Tern really seems to believe this is a real blight, however. You want to ask me about something else? Then let's get a move on, shall we? Who is that? Grey Wardens? Well, he's not half as dead as he looks, is he? My scouting band was attacked by Darkspawn. They came out of the ground. Please, help me. I've got to... return to camp. I have bandages in my pack. Thank you. Oh. I... I've got to get out of here. Did you hear? An entire patrol of seasoned men killed by Darkspawn. Calm down, Sir Jory. We'll be fine if we're careful. Those soldiers were careful, and they were still overwhelmed. How many Darkspawn can the four of us slay? A dozen? A hundred? There's an entire army in these forests. There are Darkspawn about, but we're in no danger of walking into the bulk of the Horde. How do you know? I'm not a coward, but this is foolish and reckless. We should go back. I am simply trying to stay alive. You do not see me fleeing, do you? A bit of fear isn't unnatural, you know. Few relish meeting Darkspawn up close. I know I don't. I know I'm relying on you to protect me. Know this. All Grey Wardens can sense Darkspawn. Whatever their cunning, I guarantee they won't take us by surprise. That's why I'm here. You see, Sir Knight, we might die, but we'll be warned about it first. That is... reassuring. That doesn't mean I'm here to make this easy, however. So let's get a move on. You heard the plan. You and Alistair will go to the Tower of Ishal and ensure the beacon is lit. What? I won't be in the battle. This is by the King's personal request, Alistair. If the beacon is not lit, Tern Loghain's men won't know when to charge. So he needs two Grey Wardens standing up there holding the torch, just in case, right? That is not your choice. If King Kaelin wishes Grey Wardens to ensure the beacon is lit, then Grey Wardens will be there. We must do whatever it takes to destroy the Darkspawn, exciting or no. I get it, I get it. Just so you know, if the King ever asks me to put on a dress and dance the Remigold, I'm drawing the line. Darkspawn or no. For you, maybe. But it has to be a pretty dress. Mm. The tower is on the other side of the gorge from the King's camp, the way we came when we arrived. You'll need to cross the gorge and head through the gate and up to the tower entrance. From the top, you'll overlook the entire valley. We will signal you when the time is right. Alistair will know what to look for. Then I must join the others. From here, you two are on your own. Remember, you are both Grey Wardens. I expect you to be worthy of that title. Duncan, may the Maker watch over you. May he watch over us all. The plan will work, Your Majesty. Of course it will. The blight ends here.
Cheers! Sound the retreat. But what about the king? Should we not do as I command? Pull out! All of you, let's move!
see. Here is your fellow Grey Warden. You worry too much, young man. You... you're alive. <laughs> I thought you were dead for sure. Duncan's dead. The Grey Wardens. Even the King. They're all... dead. Oh, this doesn't seem real. If it weren't for Morrigan's mother, we'd be dead on top of that tower. Do not talk about me as if I am not present, lad. I, I didn't mean... But, but what do we call you? You've, ne you've never told us your name. Names are pretty, but useless. The chastened folk call me Flemeth. I suppose it will do. The Flemeth? From the legends? Daveth was right. You're the Witch of the Wilds, aren't you? And what does that mean? I know a bit of magic, and it has served you both well, has it not? <laughs> All that I wish you to do is what you are meant to do. It has always been the Grey Warden's duty to unite the lands against the Blight. Or did that change when I wasn't looking? If you think small numbers make you helpless, you are already defeated. But we were fighting the Darkspawn. The King had nearly defeated them. Why would Loghain do this? Now that is a good question. Men's hearts hold shadows darker than any tainted creature. Perhaps he believes the Blight is an army he can outmaneuver. Perhaps he does not see that the evil behind it is the true threat. The Archdemon. All Grey Wardens in Ferelden are gone. Except for us. I've lost everyone. For the love of the Maker, don't back out on me now. Duncan was like a father to me. I won't let his death be in vain. But I can't do anything on my own. By ourselves? No Grey Warden has ever defeated a Blight without the army of a half-dozen nations at his back. Not to mention... I don't know how. How to kill the Archdemon, or how to raise an army? It seems to me those are two different questions, hmm? Have the Wardens no allies these days? I... I, I, I don't know. Duncan said that the Grey Wardens of Orlais had been called, and Arl Eamon would never stand for this, surely. I suppose. Arl Eamon wasn't at Ostagar. He still has all his men. And he was Caelan's uncle. I know him. He's a good man, respected in the Landsmeet. Of course, we could go to Redcliffe and appeal to him for help. See? There is a smart lass. Of course! The treaties! Grey Wardens can demand aid from dwarves, elves, mages, and other places. They're obligated to help us during a blight. I may be old, but dwarves, elves, mages, this Arl Eamon, and who knows what else. This sounds like an army to me. So can we do this? Go to Redcliffe and these other places and build an army? It's always been the Grey Warden's duty to stand against a blight. And right now, we're the Grey Wardens. So you are set then, ready to be Grey Wardens. Now, before you go, there is yet one more thing I can offer you. The stew is bubbling, Mother dear. Shall we have two guests for the eve? Or none? The Grey Wardens are leaving shortly, girl. And you will be joining them. Such a shame. What? You heard me, girl. The last time I looked, you had ears. <laughs> have I no say in this? You have been itching to get out of the wilds for years. Here is your chance. As for you, Wardens, consider this repayment for your lives. Pardon me, but I had the impression that you two needed assistance, whatever the form. Not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but won't this add to our problems? Out of the wilds, she's an apostate. If you do not wish help from us illegal mages, young man, perhaps I should have left you on that tower. Point taken. Mother, this is not how I wanted this. I'm not even ready. You must be ready. Alone, these two must unite for Eldon against the Darkspawn. They need you, Morrigan. Without you, they will surely fail, and all will perish under the Blight. 
Even I. I... understand. And you, Wardens, do you understand? I give you that which I value above all in this world. I do this because you must succeed. Allow me to get my things, if you please. I am at your disposal, Grey Wardens. I suggest a village north of the wilds as our first destination. It is not far, and you will find much you need there. Or, if you prefer, I shall simply be your silent guide. The choice is yours. Farewell, Mother. Do not forget the stew on the fire. I would hate to return to a burned-down hut. Bah! Tis far more likely you will return to see this entire area, along with my hut, swallowed up by the blight. I... all I meant was... Yes, I know. Do try to have fun, dear. Bad dreams, huh? Drank more like, as in the tainted blood, remember? You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. What do you need? Ask away. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? You're cute when you get all irritable, you know that. You get this little knot right between your... Oh, never mind. Let's see, I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. <laughs> well, it wasn't an easy life, you know. I don't know whether or not you've noticed, but I'm not exactly the Chantry type. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. Oh, I suppose the Chantry life is good enough for some. Here, we have the chance to fight against the Blight. To actually do some good instead of sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have... He was... A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. What do you need? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. I suppose he did. It probably sounds stupid, but part of me wishes I was with him, in the battle. I feel like I abandoned him. Of course, I'd be dead then, wouldn't I? It's not like that would make him happier. I think he came from High Ever, or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime, see about putting up something in his honor. I don't know. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... Yes, I... 
imagine you really have, haven't you? Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. I'd like that. So would he, I think. What do you need? Ask away. Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Well, they were flying dogs, you see. Surprisingly strict parents, too. And devout Andrastians to boot. <laughs> all right, all right, I give. I cannot match your rapier wit. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him any more for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. I was young and resentful and not very pious. Of course I blamed him. I remember screaming at him like a little child. Well, I was a child, so I doubt he was surprised. Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence, I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle. So he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. Yes, that's right. I stopped you to tell you that I'm an idiot. Whew! Thank the Maker you know already. Now I can stop worrying, I'll be found out. I am? That... No, no, never mind that. I'm not trying to be cute. I'm trying to be serious. Just listen. I told you before how Al Eamon raised me, right? That my mother was a serving girl at the castle and he took me in? The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek, which made Caelan my half-brother, I suppose. Ha! Yes, I guess it does at that. I should use that line more often. I, I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. At any rate, that's it. That's what I had to tell you. I thought you should know about it. Besides my unholy love of fine cheeses and a minor obsession with my hair, no, that's it. Just the prince thing. No! Maker's breath! Just hearing that gives me a heart attack. It's not true, anyhow. I'm the son of a commoner. It was always made clear that the throne is not in my future. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Al Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Caelan's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens.
The reason why I say I was lucky. Something on your mind? Of course. Such as they are. That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. Just left? You mean just left Ferelden? I don't know. If there's an Archdemon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it. And that means the Blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlais and other lands would hear about it, and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves Lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. Something on your mind? Of course. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Well, they do it, and they feel perfectly justified. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective, or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. No, I, I know that. That's not what I'm talking about. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me, either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But after I became a Grey Warden, 
I did some checking and, well, I found out she's still alive in Denerim. She's the only real family I have left, the only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. Something on your mind? Of course. Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? I'm not sure I do. Have I never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Make fun of you, dear lady. Perish the thought. Well, tell me. Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? Just the once, and you didn't lose half of your tongue in the process. <laughs> I'm impressed. I, myself, never had the pleasure. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know. Oh, that's funny. Such cruelty from such a beautiful woman. If you hear sobbing later, that's me crying myself to sleep. I... did I say beautiful? Do you have any particular opinion on my saying that? Then I'll have to think of something more provocative next time, won't I? Until then, we should get underway, no? I have many tearful nights in my tent to contemplate, after all. Yes? Ask away. Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. On confession day, we could go all night. Being a Templar isn't all about chasing men in skirts and hiding behind priests, you know. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. You know, I like the way you think. But I guess if you're really curious, there's no harm in obliging. I have a couple of interesting-looking moles I can show you later, too, if you're interested. The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. Using the abilities I have came after years of education and discipline that was difficult to achieve, if rewarding. The sword training and religious doctrine all came later. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? Really? <laughs> I... I guess I like the sound of that. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well... A time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose... The Grey Wardens are gone for good, either way. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. <laughs> so
So, you're female, Liliana, right? I am? That's news. When did that happen? I just wanted some advice. What should I do if... if I think a woman is special and... You want to woo her? Here's a good tip. You shouldn't question her about her femaleness. All right, yes, good point. Why do you ask? Are you afraid things will not proceed naturally? Why would they? Especially when I do things like ask women if they're female. It adds to your charm, Alistair. You're a little awkward. It is endearing. So I should be awkward? Didn't you just say not to do things like that? Just be yourself. You do know how to do that, don't you? All right. Forget I asked. It's great to see you again. I was just thinking about you. Isn't that a marvelous coincidence? This is my sister, Goldana. These are her children, and there's more about somewhere. <laughs> We're one big happy family, at long last. Oh, that's what everyone says about their relatives. But I've never been happier. I'm overjoyed to have my little brother back. I'll never let him out of my sight again. There's nothing wrong with living with my sister. I've never had a real family before. Well, Alistair, is your friend staying for supper? Say you'll stay. Goldana's a great cook. Maybe she'll make her mince pie. You can, can't you? Of course, dear brother. Anything for you. How can you say that about Goldana? She's... she's the soul of goodness. You're acting really strangely. All right, if it makes you happy. I... It's a little fuzzy. But that's strange. Alistair, come and have some tea. No. Wait. I remember a... tower. The circle. It was under attack. There were demons. That's all I really remember. Are you saying this is a, a dream? But it's so real. Of course it's real. Now wash up before supper and I... Something doesn't feel quite right here. I... think I have to go. No, he is ours, and I'd rather see him dead than free. G gold Danner? I can't believe it. How did I not see this earlier? Yes, uh, well, try not to tell everyone how easily fooled I was. Are we going now? Wait, where are you going? What's happening to me? Hey! So, what would you do if someone told you that they loved you? <laughs> Check their eyesight first, perhaps. Is this someone I should know about? No, I mean, pretend you're a woman. I am a woman, Alistair. That shouldn't be too hard. 
but I'll give it a try. Oh, that's... No, that's not what I meant. Just pretend you're another woman. Someone told you that they loved you. How would you react? Well, that depends. Does this someone just blurt it out? Do I love them back? I need context. I, I don't know if you love him back. Maybe you do. You've spent a lot of time with this person. Perhaps you need to wait for the right moment. You could get her alone in camp. Give her a gift, perhaps. Oh, I, I wasn't talking about me. Just, um... Forget I said anything. <laughs> As you wish. Here, look at this. Do you know what this is? Yes, that's right. Watch as I thrash our enemies with the mighty power of floral arrangements. Feel my thorns, dark spawn. Ah! I will overpower you with my rosy scent. Ah! <sighs> or, you know, it could just be a rose. I know that's pretty dull in comparison. Is it that easy to see right through me? Huh. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking, how could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness. I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. A darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. I thought that I might give it to you, actually. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. Oh, wow. She'll never see through that, I told myself. Boy, was I wrong. I'm glad you like it. I was just thinking, here I am doing all this complaining, and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a Grey Warden since you're joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. It's all been death and fighting and tragedy. I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this... darkness. Ha <laughs> ha! You won't land me that easily, woman. I know I'm quite the prize after all. No need to start crying on me or anything. I guess it was uh, just a stupid impulse. I don't know. Was it the wrong one? Cute. Cute! Oh, just what I was aiming for. Ow! You could just stab me in the face first before you say something like that. I'm glad you like it. Now, if we could move right on past this awkward, embarrassing stage and get right to the steamy bits, I'd appreciate it. Ha ha ha. Bluff called. Damn, she saw right through me. Well, it doesn't have to be a bluff. Well, I suppose we are in the camp. The tents, right over there, this is true. I'll be... <laughs> I'll be standing over here until the blushing stops. Just to be uh, safe. You know how it is. At your service. Of course. I didn't know them for very long. But I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family, since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. Not as Grey Wardens. Not while I was there. I saw pictures of some, though none of them were as pretty as you are. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfels. What was his name? It was Gregor... Gregor... He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink. He drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. Sometimes. We were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Well, anyhow, it doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other, and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... 
until... Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but... It just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by. Nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his, that I could... take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well, there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. Let's just go. I'm wondering something. I'd like to know your thoughts about some of our traveling companions. Do you mind if I ask? I've got this nefarious plan to go around to each of them and secretly tell them all the nasty things you said. That way they'll mutiny and I shall become the group leader. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty good policy. <laughs> Where exactly is lunch anyway? Seriously, though, I'm only curious. I've had enough time to form my own opinions, and I just want to see if yours are any different. Zevran, the elf. You can't trust him, can you? Do you believe his so-called vow? Maybe a little. That doesn't stop the question from being relevant. Just answer the question! Oh, you're killing me here! That's a lot to put on a maybe isn't it? He's an assassin. The crows aren't known for giving up. Maybe he's just biding his time. Hmm. Well, if you are, then maybe I should too. But that doesn't mean I won't keep an eye on him. He's just too shifty. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? Or do you really believe in her vision? That's one way to put it. I don't know what to make of her. If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so... so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. Oh, fine, fine, have it your way. Stomp on my one little feeling. Morrigan, do you trust her? Think about it. Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. Well, aside from the fact that she's a complete and utter bitch, no. I don't like her at all. Why, do you? Great. I am thrilled beyond words. No, really. Enough. I think my curiosity is sated. Let's get back to it, shall we? So, all this time we've spent together, you know, the tragedy, the brushes with death, the constant battles with the whole blight looming over us. Will you miss it once it's over? Ha! <laughs> uh, there'll be no more running for our lives. No more darkspawn. Ugh, and no more camping in the middle of nowhere. I know it might sound strange, considering we haven't known each other for very long, but I've come to care for you. A great deal. I think maybe it's because we've gone through so much together. I, I don't know. Or maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I'm fooling myself. Am I? 
fooling myself? Or do you think you might ever feel the same way about me? So I fooled you, did I? Good to know. That... That wasn't too soon, was it? Well, I'll have to arrange that in the meantime. Make his breath, but you're beautiful. I am a lucky man. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to what we were up to before, lest I forget why we're here. At your service. Of course. You mean other than becoming a Grey Warden? Hmm. You know, I asked Duncan this too. And all I got was, you'll see. I have other lines for you. Trust me. Oh, it's not that Duncan wants to keep it a secret. It's just that the Grey Wardens don't discuss it much. I gather it's not a pleasant topic. The first change I noticed was an increase in appetite. I used to get up in the middle of the night and raid the castle larder. I thought I was starving. I'd slurp down every dinner like it was my last, <laughs> my face all covered in gravy. When I'd look up, the other Grey Wardens would stare, then laugh themselves to tears. Really, because I was watching you wolf down food the other day, and I thought, ooh, it's a good thing she gets a lot of exercise. I'll say. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> um, no, don't hit me. I bruise easily. Oh, and then there were the nightmares. Duncan said it was part of how we sense the darkspawn. We tap into their, well, I don't know what you call it, their group mind. And when we sleep, it's even worse. You learn to block it out after a while, but at first it's hard. It's supposed to be worse for those who join during a blight. How is it for you? Some people never have much trouble, but that's rare. Others have trouble sleeping their entire life. They're just more sensitive, I suppose. Everyone ends up the same, though. Once you reach a certain age, the real nightmares come. That's how a Grey Warden knows his time has come. Oh, that's right. We never had time to tell you that part, did we? Well, in addition to all the other wonderful things about being a Grey Warden, you don't need to worry about dying from old age. You've got 30 years to live. Give or take. The taint. It's a death sentence. Ultimately, your body won't be able to take it. When the time comes, most Grey Wardens go to Orzammar and die in battle rather than waiting. It's tradition. And you wondered why we kept the joining a secret from the new recruits. And there you have it. I suppose it is. We're the only ones who can stop the blight, however. Is there a price too high to pay for that? You know, Duncan... He started having the nightmares again. He told me that in private. He said it wouldn't be long before he'd go to Orzammar himself. I guess he got what he wanted. I just wish it had been something worthy of him. I know. Ending the blight should make this all worthwhile, right? Oh, wow. Savage. If you keep shoveling down our rations like that, the entire party is going to starve. <laughs> I jest, I jest, don't kill me. No, don't hit me, I bruise easily. Does this mean I'm in trouble?
Why are you smiling like that? You look suspiciously like the cat that swallowed the pigeon. Canary. What? I look like the cat that swallowed the canary. I once had a very large cat, but not my point. My point is, why are you smirking? <laughs> you were watching her with great interest, I might add. In fact, I believe you were enraptured. She's our leader. I look to her for guidance. Oh, I see. So what guidance did you find in those swaying hips, hmm? No, no, no. I wasn't looking at, you know, her hind quarters. Certainly. I gazed, glanced in that direction, maybe. But I wasn't staring. Or really seeing anything, even. Of course. I hate you. You're a bad person. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Alistair is a fine lad, skilled in battle, but quite inexperienced when it comes to affairs of the heart. I would hate to see him get hurt. Not intentionally, no. But there is great potential for tragedy here, for one or both of you. You are both Grey Wardens, and he is the son of a king. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. Love is ultimately selfish. It demands that one be devoted to a single person, who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? I apologize if I've offended. I was just trying to point out why this affair may be a bad idea. If you insist, I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. Something you need, my dear. Of course. You never asked? Ah... <sighs> All right. If you want the full explanation, I'll give it to you. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then after the battle, when I should have told you, I don't know, it seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? I... I should have told you, anyway. It was important for you to know. I guess part of me liked you not knowing. It's just that anyone who's ever found out has treated me differently afterwards. I was the bastard prince instead of just being Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shaped my entire life. I never wanted it, and I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. For all the good it does me, my blood seems certain to haunt me no matter what I do. I guess I should be thankful that Al Eamon is far more likely to inherit the throne than I am. He's not royal blood, but he was Caelan's uncle, and more importantly, is very popular. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. I... I guess I was just hoping that you would like me for who I am. It was a dumb thing to do. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. I can get used to this, you know. This? This is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? I suppose there might have been other amulets like these made, but I've never seen any others. It looks very old. Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall, and he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? I guess you could be right. We never really talked that much, and then the way I left... Thank you. I mean it. I... 
thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. I just wanted to thank you. You went out of your way to save the Arles family and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... Well, it, it makes me feel good that at least we were able to save something. No matter how small. I owed the Arles that much. You're right. Hopefully, by that time, there's still enough of Ferelden left to save. Good. Now that the warm, fuzzy part of the day is over with, we can get back to the ritual dismemberments. Oh, wait. It's not Tuesday, is it? I do wonder, is it permissible for two Grey Wardens to... Oh, what is the word I search for? Caboodle? Fraternize. What's wrong with fraternizing? It seems most... undisciplined. For an organization that claims it will do whatever is necessary to end the Darkspawn threat. One thing has nothing to do with the other. Oh, no? And what if a Grey Warden was forced to choose between the Warden he loved and ending the Blight? What should his choice be? That is a, a ridiculous question. And I have my answer. Most kind of you. Alistair, may I have a word? Of course. Anything for my favoritest mage ever. It seems you and our fearless leader are inseparable these days. Joined at the hip, almost. That's a bit of an overstatement, don't you think? Well then, now that you're in an intimate relationship, you should learn about where babies really come from. Pardon? 
I know the Chantry says you dream about your babies and the good Fade spirits take them out of the Fade and leave them in your arms. But that's not true. Actually, what happens is that when a girl and a boy really love each other... Andraste's flaming sword, I know where babies come from. Do you? Do you really? I certainly hope so. Oh, all right then. Oh, look, you're all red and mottled. How cute. You did that on purpose. Now, now, Alistair. Why would I do such a thing? Because you're wicked. That frail old lady act, I'm so not fooled. I'm on to you now. What's on your mind? I have watched you for a time, and perhaps I was wrong. There seems to be something special between the two of you. He seems less guarded when in your company, allows himself to relax, and he seems genuinely happy. I think I was too harsh in my judgment before, and I am sorry. What you have may not last forever. Death and duty may part you, but love's worthiness is not diminished because of that. I should have seen this before. Instead, you learn to cherish every precious moment that you spend together, knowing that it may be the last. And for those of us watching, well... It brings warmth to these old bones to know that something so beautiful can be found in the midst of chaos and strife. That's my sister's house. I'm almost sure of it. This is, yes, this is the right address. She could be inside. Could we go and see? Do I seem a little nervous? I am. I really don't know what to expect. I'd like you to be there with me, if you're willing. Or we could leave, I suppose. We really don't have time to pay a visit, do we? Maybe we should go. I am not. All right, maybe I am. I am totally a coward. I just... What would I say to her? Does she even know I exist? Will she be happy to see me? Hmm. Oh, now I'm babbling. Maybe we should go. Let's go. Let, let's just go. Uh, hello? Hey, you have linens to wash? I charge three bits on a bundle. You won't find better. And don't trust what that Natalia woman tells you either. She's foreign and she'll rob you blind. I'm not here to have any wash done. <laughs> uh, my name's Alistair. I'm... Well, this may sound sort of strange, but are you called Dana? If so, I suppose I'm your brother. My what? I am Goldana, yes. How do you know my name? What kind of tomfoolery are you folk up to? Look, our mother, she worked as a servant in Redcliffe Castle a long time ago before she died. D do you know about that? She... You! I knew it! They told me you was dead! They told me the babe was dead along with mother, but I knew they was lying. They told you I was dead? Who? Who told you that? Them's at the castle. I told them the babe was the king's and they said he was dead. Gave me a coin to shut my mouth and sent me on my way. I knew it. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. The babe didn't die. I'm him. I'm your brother. <laughs> For all the good it does me. You killed Mother, you did, and I've had to scrape by all this time. That coin didn't last long, and when I went back, they ran me off. And who in the Maker's name are you? Some elf to follow him about and carry his riches for him? Hey, don't speak to her that way. She's my friend and a Grey Warden, just like me. Oh, I see. A prince and a Grey Warden, too. Well, who am I to think poorly of someone so high and mighty compared to me? I don't know you, boy. Your royal father forced himself on my mother and took her away from me. And what do I got to show for it? Nothing. They tricked me good. I should have told everyone. I got five mouths to feed. And unless you can help with that, I got less than no use for you. I... I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. Well, he found it. And what good is that to me? None. That's what. Unless he can see to it that his family lives as it should. I suppose maybe I could give her some money for my nieces and nephews. Fifteen sovereigns, maybe? Would you let me give her that? Then here, Goldana, take this money. I know it's not much, but... You, a prince, marching in here with your fancy armor and such, and this is all you got to offer? You must think I'm very stupid. 
No, wait, I, I don't think that at all. I, I want to help, if I can. You want to help? You go to whatever high and mighty folks you run with, and you tell them you've got nephews and nieces that aren't living as they've a right to. You do that! Yes, it really seems that way, doesn't it? I wasn't expecting my sister to be so... I'm starting to wonder why I came. I don't know why you came either, or what you expected to find. But it isn't here. Now get out of my house, the both of you. No. Just leave her alone. It's her house after all. Let's just go. Well, that was not what I expected, to put it lightly. I lived up to my promise, I suppose, but this is the family I've been wondering about all my life? I can't believe it. I... I guess I was expecting her to accept me without question. Isn't that what family is supposed to do? I... I feel like a complete idiot. Such as... The only person who ever cared about me was Duncan. And he's gone. I... Thank you. I'm glad you came with me. Let's just go. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Look, before we go any further, I want to say something. I appreciate that you brought me to see my sister and that you, well, that you were there to talk me down after we left. You're a true friend and I love you. I just wanted to tell you that. Of course not, don't be ridiculous. If anything, I was wondering if I was too tall. You do? What do you know? Wishes really do come true sometimes. At your service. It's just the two of us. What's on your mind? You know I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Given the circumstances, things could have been so much worse. I'm so grateful that you're... You, instead of some other Grey Warden. Mm, that sounded better in my head. I, I just mean to say that I've really come to care about you. I guess I really don't know how to ask you this. No, I, I mean, yes. I mean, I'm a little nervous, sure. Not that this is anything bad or frightening or... Well, yes. Oh, how do I say this? You think it would be easier, but every time I'm around you, I feel as if my head's about to explode. I, I can't think straight. Right, pulling myself together. Oh, did that do it? Yes, maybe it did. Here's the thing. Being near you makes me crazy, but I can't imagine being without you. Not ever. I don't know how to say this another way. I want to spend the night with you, here, in the camp. Maybe this is too fast, I don't know, but I know what I feel. I wanted to wait for the perfect time, the perfect place, but when will it be perfect? If things were, we wouldn't even have met. We sort of 
stumbled into each other. And despite this being the least perfect time, I still found myself falling for you in between all the fighting and everything else. I really don't want to wait anymore. I've... I've never done this before. You know that. I want it to be with you. While we have the chance. In case... You know, according to all the sisters at the monastery, I should have been struck by lightning by now. <laughs> sure. But if you get hit by the lightning afterwards, it hardly seems like an effective deterrent. You do realize the rest of our little party here is going to talk, right? They do that. See? <laughs> this is why I love you. So, what now? Where do we go from here? You're so practical. You may be proud. All right, I get the hint. We have a lot to do, right? And we should do it. Before we go, I just want to thank you. No one's ever made me feel this way. I wasn't sure it could happen, in fact. is a bit sickening. The little Templar is all grown up and apparently he <clears throat> plays well with others. Mm -hmm. He must be pleasant enough in bed for surely I cannot imagine anyone enduring his conversation. <laughs> That does not look good. <laughs> Will you look at that? Half of us aren't getting any sleep, the way you two carry on all night. Oh. I do not think I will recover from this quickly. Might I offer you a bit of advice, my good friend Alistair? I like my hair the way it is, thank you. Truly. As you wish, though my advice is regarding something else completely. It has to do with your recent exertions with your fellow Grey Warden that I overheard. My... Oh. It did seem as if you just got going when all grew quiet. You are feeling all right, yes? Uh, perhaps you're tired. We aren't talking about this, are we? Did I hit my head? I have some roots from home that you may chew if you need energy. As for volume, perhaps you ought to try arching your... Whoa, whoa! Awkward! You Ferelden's are so finicky. How will you ever learn how to pleasure each other unless you talk about it? Not listening! La 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 la! Denerim is the heart and soul of Ferelden. 
It was the city of King Kalanhad, the birthplace of Andraste. As stubborn as a Mabari, and as good to have on your side. If we defeat Loghain here, the rest of the nation will follow us. By calling the Landsmeet, I've struck the first blow. The advantage, for the moment, is ours. He will have little choice but to show himself, to oppose us directly. He will strike back at us. The only question that remains is how soon. Logan, this is an honor that the Regent would find time to greet me personally. How could I not welcome a man so important as to call every lord in Ferelden away from his estates while a blight claws at our land? The blight is why I'm here. With Caelan dead, Ferelden must have a king to lead it against the Darkspawn. Ferelden has a strong leader. It's queen. And I lead her armies. And who is this, Eamon? Some new stray you picked up on the road? And here I thought it was only royal bastards you play the nursemaid to, not elven derelicts. Well, you're admitting the royal part. That's a start. You have my sympathies on what happened to your order. It is unfortunate that they chose to turn against Ferelden. You should curb your tongue. This is my city, and no safe place to speak treason. For anyone. There is talk that your illness left you feeble, Eamon. Some worry that you may no longer be fit to advise Ferelden. Illness? Why not call your poison by its true name? Not everyone at the Landsmeet will cast aside their loyalties as easily as you and these sycophants. How long you've been gone from court, Eamon? Don't you recognize Rendon Howe, Arl of Amaranthine, and Terran of High Ever? And current Arl of Denerim, since Urien's unfortunate fate at Ostagar, the Regent has been generous to those who prove loyal. Don't interrupt, Churl. Your betters are talking. Enough, Carthrian. This is not the time or place. I had hoped to talk you down from this rash course, Eamon. Our people are frightened. Our king is dead. Our land is under siege. We must be united now if we are to endure this crisis. Your own sister, Queen Rowan, fought tirelessly to see Ferelden restored. Would you see her work destroyed? You divide our nation and weaken our efforts against the Blight, with your selfish ambitions to the throne. I was not talking to you. I cannot forgive what you've done, Loghain. Perhaps the Maker can, but not I. Our people deserve a king of the Theron bloodline. Alistair will be the one to lead us to victory in this blight. Oh, is that all I have to do? No pressure. The Emperor of Orlais also thought I could not bring him down. Expect no more mercy than I showed him. There is nothing I would not do for my homeland. Well, that was bracing. I didn't expect Loghain to show himself quite so soon. My sister married King Merrick while he was still in exile. At that time, he and Loghain were inseparable. The wild prince who'd never seen the inside of a castle and the farmer's son. When Loghain joined Merrick's rebels, he was just a raw-boned boy, but he got on one knee to swear that he would see Ferelden free or die trying. He made us a free people once more. You can't know what it was like to grow up as a vassal in your own land, while poncy little Orlesians minced around in their silks. I would never have believed he would do anything but what was best for Ferelden. We need eyes and ears in the city. Loghain has been here for months. The roots of all his schemes must begin here. The sooner we find them, the better we can turn them to our advantage. Go have a look around, and see what you can turn up. Better yet, find the nobles who have arrived for the landsmate. Test the waters. See how many will support us. When you're ready to talk strategy, come upstairs to my sitting room. We can lay out our plans for the landsmate then.
hello? Hello. <sighs> are you serious? So, are you a very religious man, Alistair? I'm curious. I believe I heard you say you were raised in an abbey. I was raised in a castle. I was schooled in the abbey. As far as being religious, I don't know. Not especially. What about you? Not in your line of work, I expect. Why do you say that? I happen to be quite devoted in my way, as most Antivans are. Truly? But you kill people for money. And I ask forgiveness for my sins from the Maker every chance I get. What manner of monster do you think I am? But you ask forgiveness and then you go right on with your sinning. The Maker has never objected. Why should you? I... I have no idea. Well, there you go. Perhaps you ought to think about asking for a little forgiveness yourself, huh? <sighs> I've got children at home. I can't wait out here for another day. So go home. The best thing you can do for your children is not trust these charlatans. Everyone remain calm. We will help as many as we can today, so long as we can do this in an orderly fashion. Oh, you're helping us, are you, Shem? Like Philendrian and my Uncle Sirian, you helped them, didn't you? Help them never to be seen again. We've explained this to you before, girl. More whining will not persuade us to let you into the quarantine to carry plague back out to the alienage. Quit trying to get us all killed, Shiani. Some of us have still got things to live for. If this spell of theirs works, why are half the people they quarantine perfectly healthy? I don't believe it. Maker's breath. They said all the Grey Wardens died with the King. Everyone thought... Valendrian even held a funeral for you. Cousin, you have no idea the, the things that happened after your wedding. I'm babbling, aren't I? I'm so happy to see you. Wedding? You're married? Still, you never told me you were betrothed. What happened? I'm sorry. So much has happened. It's good you're home. Uh, well, maybe we should go somewhere so you can be sitting down when I tell you this. I know. You don't flinch from anything, cousin. But the Tevinters quarantined your father yesterday. I told him not to go to the hospice. Not one elf they've taken in there has come out again. Who knows what's become of them? I knew you'd do something, cousin. Make her watch over you. Sit down and eat something. Don't they feed Grey Wardens? You're all bones. Something you need, my dear. Well, we're not exactly alone. What did you have in mind? I don't know. Ar Lehman wants to make me king at the land's meet. I never ever wanted that, not in my wildest dreams. But I won't refuse it if it's in the best interests of the nation either. I love you. You know that, right? But I have no idea what being king will mean for us. I'll have to think about that. Is it? What about duty? What about honor? Those things are important too, aren't they? I hope they don't come between us, but I... I can't say that they won't. I'm sorry. This isn't really the time for this conversation. Please, let's... just talk about this another time. This, this shield... It's... Duncan's, isn't it? That's his crest. Thank you. 
Truly, I had no idea his shield wasn't with him. This is perfect. I, I don't know how else to express my gratitude. This means a great deal to me. I can't believe you remembered it at all. I'll treasure this. Thank you. Something you need, my dear. I think you make her very happy. Oh, not this again. I'm ready this time. I just wanted to say that this was something good for both of you. Being a Grey Warden isn't easy. I'm glad you found each other. Oh, yes. I bet you are indeed. Cherish this. It may not last. And? That's all I had to say. Really? No pinching my cheeks? No making me blush? Of course not. I like you, Alistair. You deserve to be happy. Not even pinching my cheeks a little?
So I'm guessing someone told Honora I was planning to steal her throne. She has a nasty glare. Did anyone mention this wasn't my idea? I think she's a great queen. As far as I'm concerned, she's welcome to it. Really? <laughs> Whatever will give you that idea? I like the way you think sometimes. Of course, I probably wouldn't be all that attractive once the people lynched me. Unless maybe they thought I was too pretty to lynch. What do you think I should do? Go ahead and be king? Just let it happen? I don't know. Marry her. As in marriage, as in be her husband. You've spoken to her about this? You did, didn't you? You... why would you do that? What about us? So are you. You're more important to me than anything. I don't want anyone else, even for pretend. I can't turn left without someone telling me something like that today. Oh, why do you think I should do this then? Tell me. Good. Oh, I like that idea much better, much better. Marrying Kaylin's widow. How could she even... No, never mind. I'm going to not think about it now. My lords and ladies of the Landsmeet, Tyrn Loghain would have us give up our freedoms, our traditions, out of fear. He placed us on this path, yet we should place our destiny in his hands? Must we sacrifice everything good about our nation to save it? A fine performance, Aemon. <laughs> But no one here is taken in by it. You would attempt to put a puppet on the throne, and every soul here knows it. The better question is who will pull the strings. Ah! Here we have the puppeteer. Tell us, Warden. How will the Orlesians take our nation from us? Will they deign to send their troops? Or simply issue their commands through this would-be prince? How much Ferelden blood does Orlesian gold buy these days? There are enough refugees in Mybanor now to make that abundantly clear. The South has fallen, Loghain. Will you let Darkspawn take the whole country for fear of Orlais? The blight is indeed real, Wolf. But do we need Grey Wardens to fight it? They claim that they alone can end the Blight, yet they failed spectacularly against the Darkspawn at Ostagar. And they asked to bring with them four legions of Chevaliers. And once we open our borders to the Chevaliers, can we really expect them to simply return from whence they came? What's this? There is no slavery in Ferelden. Explain yourself. There is no saving the alienage. Damage from the riots has yet to be repaired. There are bodies still rotting in their homes. It is not a place I would send my worst enemy. There is no chance of holding it if the Blight comes here. Despite what you may think, Warden, I have done my duty. Whatever my regrets may be for the Elves, I have done what was needed for the good of Ferelden. Indeed. Do we not owe it to Merrick to see his son on the throne? If he were a true son of Merrick, I would not hesitate to swear fealty to him. But I see nothing of Merrick in this pup. But enough of this. 
I have a question for you, Warden. What have you done with my daughter? You took my daughter, our queen, by force. Killing her guards in the process. What arts have you employed to keep her? Does she even still live? I believe I can speak for myself. <gasps> Lords and ladies of Ferelden, hear me. My father is no longer the man you know. This man is not the hero of Riverdane. This man turned his troops aside and refused to protect your king as he fought bravely against the Darkspawn. This man seized Caelan's throne before his body was cold and locked me away so I could not reveal his treachery. I would have already been killed, if not for this Grey Warden. So, the Warden's influence has poisoned even your mind, Anora. I wanted to protect you from this. My lords and ladies! Our land has been threatened before! It's been invaded and lost and won times beyond counting. We Ferelden's have proven that we will never truly be conquered so long as we are united. We must not let ourselves be divided now. Stand with me, and we shall defeat even the Blight itself! Southreach stands with the Grey Wardens. Waking Sea stands with the Grey Warden. Dragon's Peak supports the Warden! The Western Hills throw their lot in with the Wardens. Make her help us. I stand by Loghain. We've no hope of victory otherwise. I stand with the Warden. The Blight is coming. We need the Grey Wardens. Traitors! Which of you stood against the Orlesian Emperor when his troops flattened your fields and raped your wives? You fought with us once, Eamon. You cared about this land once, before you got too old and fat and content to even see what you risk. None of you deserve a say in what happens here. None of you have spilled blood for this land the way I have. How dare you judge me? Then, let us end this. I suppose we both knew it would come to this. A man is made by the quality of his enemies. Marek told me that once. I wonder if it's more a compliment to you or me. Enough. Let the landsmeet declare the terms of the duel. It shall be fought according to tradition. A test of arms in single combat until one party yields. And we who are assembled will abide by the outcome. Do you accept the terms? I don't think we have a choice. I'll accept the challenge. Then let us test the mettle of our would-be king. Prepare yourself. some of Marek in you after all. Good. Forget Marek. This is for Duncan. So it is decided. Alistair will take his father's throne. Wait, what? No! When did this get decided? Nobody's decided that. Have they? He refuses the throne. Everyone here has heard him. I think it's clear then. He abdicates in favor of me. I hardly think you're the appropriate person to mediate this, Anora. Warden, will you help us? As the arbiter of this dispute, what is your decision? Who will lead Ferelden? Thank you, Warden. You were wise not to disrupt Ferelden's governance any further in a time of such crisis. 
My first act as Queen must be to insist on receiving Alistair's oath before all the lands meet, to relinquish all claim to the throne for himself and his heirs. Oh, I never wanted it. I mean, yes, of course. Happily, in fact. And now, lords and ladies of Ferelden, there is still a blight to defeat and armies to gather, and I appoint this woman to lead us in both. We will not allow this land be further threatened by the Archdemon. Gather your forces and await the Warden's command. On the morrow, we shall begin our struggle against the greatest threat Ferelden has ever faced. And we shall triumph over it, for we are Ferelden. Before I forget, I need to say something. When Arl Eamon said I was going to be king, I thought, that's it. Your worst fears have finally been realized. But you didn't make me king. And Loghain still got what he deserved. Everything worked out, thanks to you. It is a relief to see you unharmed, and you as well, Alistair. The darkspawn that attacked Threadcliffe were relatively few in number, I'm afraid. It was assumed the Horde was marching in this direction, but that is not true. Riordan tells us that the bulk of the Horde is in fact heading towards Denerim. They are perhaps two days away from the capital. How certain are we that this is good information? I ventured close enough to listen in, as it were. I am quite certain. It will certainly fall without our armies, and there is no guarantee we can reach the city in time. There is, I'm afraid, one other piece of news that is of even greater concern. The Archdemon has shown itself. The dragon is at the head of the Horde. Make her preserve us. And we won't be able to reach Denerim within two days. We must begin a forced march to the capital immediately with what we have. Denerim must be defended at all costs. And only the Grey Wardens can defeat the Archdemon. That is why we must go. Then we march. And hope the army collected here gives you the chance you need. Arleman, how long before the army can set out? By daybreak, Your Majesty. Then give the order. The longer we delay, the longer Denerim will be at the mercy of the Horde. This may be our only chance to face the Archdemon. We could stop the blight here before it truly starts. I will give the orders at once, and will notify you the moment we are ready to march. Excellent. Then if you and Alistair could meet me before you retire, we have Grey Warden business to discuss. I will have someone show you to your rooms. I suggest you all get some rest while you can. We will need it. You're both here. Good. Please know I assumed you had already been told. Otherwise, I would have told you this when you freed me in Denerim. I'm sorry. What is it? What are you apologizing for? Tell me. Have you ever wondered why the Grey Wardens are needed to defeat the Darkspawn? That is exactly what it involves. The Archdemon may be slain, as any other Darkspawn. But should any other than a Grey Warden do the slaying, it will not be enough. The essence of the beast will pass through the taint to the nearest Darkspawn and will be reborn anew in that body. The dragon is thus all but immortal. But if the Archdemon is slain by a Grey Warden, its essence travels into the Grey Warden instead. A Darkspawn is an empty, soulless vessel, but a Grey Warden is not. The essence of the Archdemon is destroyed, and so is the Grey Warden. Meaning... The Grey Warden who kills the Archdemon dies. Yes. Without the Archdemon, the Blight ends. 
It is the only way. In Blight's past, when the time came, the eldest of the Grey Wardens would decide which amongst them would take that final blow. If possible, the final blow should be mine to make. I am the eldest and the taint will not spare me much longer. But if I fail, the deed falls on you. The Blight must be stopped now, or it will destroy all of Ferelden before the rest of the Grey Wardens can assemble. Remember that. But enough. There will be much to do tomorrow, and little enough time to rest before it. I will let you return to your rooms. I will see you once the army is ready to march, then. I guess this ends soon, one way or another. That it does, my friend. That it does. The Darkspawn is an empty soulless vessel. The essence of the Archdemon is destroyed, and so is the Grey Wardens. Meaning, the Grey Warden who kills the Archdemon dies. Yes. Without the Archdemon, the light ends. It is the only way. There you are. It is. You'd be best to keep your guard up, while enjoying yourself, of course. We can go to Danarum, but somehow I suspect that they're not going to let us just walk around. Only a suspicion, of course. Most your age would spend much of their time preoccupied wondering when they might perish. Yet you already know. Oh, that's funny. Such cruelty from such a beautiful woman. If you hear sobbing later, that's me crying myself to sleep. Consider the possibility that Riordan may not be there to make the final blow as he plans. What then? Do you run away? We don't know what will happen tomorrow. Riordan could end it. Or both of us could die before we even get close. You do still intend to kill your target, do you not? Is your reputation not on the line? I'm going to get some sleep now. We are done talking about this. You love hair. Big surprise. Do you care what anyone thinks? Not unless they can do something for you, I'm sure. No, I can see that. You don't care what anyone thinks. I'd be happy if I thought you cared about anyone other than yourself. With you. Who needs Darkspawn? I... I can't. Oh, I get it. This is the part where we're shocked to discover how you've never had a friend your entire life. Only one. Alistair, if I could do something terrible to aid... Must I? I suppose we could use whatever help we can get. Alistair. Weakness. You will regret this, and so will I. And perhaps that is how it must be. Do not be alarmed. It is only I. I decided that it was time we spoke. I have a plan, you see. A way out. The loop in your hole. I know what happens when the Archdemon dies. I know a Grey Warden must be sacrificed, and that sacrifice could be you. I have come to tell you that this does not need to be. I offer a way out. A way out for all the Grey Wardens, that there need be no sacrifice. A ritual. 
performed on the eve of battle, in the dark of night. Perhaps, but that price need not be so unbearable, especially if there is much to be gained. All I ask is that you listen to what I have to offer, nothing more. What I propose is this. Convince Alistair to lay with me, here tonight. And from this ritual, a child shall be conceived within me. The child will bear the taint, and when the Archdemon is slain, its essence will seek the child like a beacon. At this early stage, the child can absorb that essence and not perish. The Archdemon is still destroyed with no Grey Warden dying in the process. Alistair despises me. You know this. He rarely listens to reason, but he would listen to you. You of all people could influence him. Think about what I offer you. You will live, as will Alistair. You could slay the Archdemon and live as a hero, something no Grey Warden has ever done. In return, I conceive a child, one who will be born with the soul of an old god. After this is done, you allow me to walk away, and you do not follow, ever. The child will be mine to raise as I wish. If you care for him as you seem to, you will convince him to. Consider what the alternative might be. Do you think Alistair will fail to do his duty as the future king and save his country? And if you take the blow instead, he loses the woman he loves. How do you think he would feel about that? I think you have many good reasons to tell him to save his own life. I think you should consider them carefully. Even if I thought Riordan could be convinced, he is unsuitable. I need one who has not been tainted for long. It must be him, and it must be tonight. A wise decision. I shall wait here then while you go and speak with Alistair. I urge you to be convincing. I see you can't sleep either. I also saw Morrigan outside your room earlier, and the look she gave me. Ooh, that was icy even for her. Is something up? But now you're changing the subject. This isn't about me, this is about Morrigan. I'm tired, but I'm not stupid. What did she want? Oh. I guess whatever Morrigan had to say, it's big. Could you make it sound more ominous? Tell me already. You mean with the Archdemon, right? If you mean running away, I can't do that, but you don't mean that, do you? What is this about? Oh, something Morrigan cooked up, no doubt. <laughs> what do you need me to do? <laughs> Cute. This is payback, right, for all the jokes? But you're not joking. You're actually serious? Wow. Be killed by the Archdemon or sleep with Morrigan. How does someone make that kind of choice? 
You're not actually asking me this, are you? What kind of ritual is this, anyway? What? I... I must be hearing things, but are you telling me to impregnate Morrigan in some kind of magical sex rite? This... this child... Why would Morrigan want such a thing? Does she want an heir to the throne? Oh, well, that's so much better, don't you think? Here I was, worried about creating another bastard heir, and I didn't even consider that it might also be some dragon god, whatever. Look, even if I was willing to entertain this idea, and I'm not saying I am, is this really what you want me to do? Are you sure? Just agree. Just like that? No, not based on what you've told me. I, I can't. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. Riordan could end it, or both of us could die before we even get close. But if it could possibly spare you or Riordan, then all right. Against my better judgment, I'll agree to this thing. Oh, where is she? Let's go and get this over with before I change my mind. Twould seem your talk is done. Great. This isn't a dream after all. What is it to be, then? Has a decision been reached? W wait I, I want to ask about this child. The one you... want. Interesting. Honesty wouldn't have been my first choice. I just want to be sure that you're not going to use this... against Ferelden. That this bastard child of mine isn't going to show up some year. Of that, you have my word. Oh, why don't I feel any better about this? All right. Let's just get this over with. Let us go somewhere more private, Alistair, and believe me when I say you will not hate this quite so much as you believe. This could be it. Soon this will be finished. One way or another. Just remember that her ritual doesn't protect us from getting squished by the Archdemon. So let's kick its ass. Oh! 
So, we made it. I'm impressed, aren't you? I was so scared that I might lose you. But here you are. And here I am. Not bad, right? At any rate, I can't wait to be alone with you. These formal affairs drive me insane. Oh, I'll be waiting. Don't you worry. I'll let you get to your adoring public. They want to see the hero of Ferelden, and who am I to keep them waiting? On the list of things I thought might happen today, a Cunari attack would have been near the bottom. Thank you for your help. I don't think we've met. My name is Alistair. I'd like nothing better than to stay and help, but unfortunately the mission we're on can't be delayed. There's something more important than an invasion. Well, you wouldn't think so, right? I'm afraid there are larger things afoot. Can't say more than that. I wish I could, but... I swore on my pinky to keep the Warden's secrets. I thought your order was more... serious. Really? I thought the joining was a laugh a minute. Hm. I get that a lot. We could use your help defending the city. Even if I didn't need to go, Grey Wardens aren't supposed to involve themselves in wars like this. We did that in Ferelden, after all. The Order was not impressed, let me tell you. Maybe this might help. It belongs to the love of my life, but she seems to find stuff like this everywhere she goes. Make a watch over you, my friend, and over us all. What are you doing in Crestwood? Hunting one of our own. We have orders to capture Sir Alistair of Ferelden on sight. The man's slippery as an eel. We've been chasing him for weeks. What have you been told about this rogue warden? Warden Commander Clarell ordered his capture. I can say no more than that. I hope Alistair comes quietly. I'll not fight the man who helped kill that many Darkspawn. Farewell. Farewell. Sir, are you sure we can't help the village? Our orders are clear. If we can't find Warden Alistair, we return to the Commander with all haste. Still don't feel right. I know, but if I judge our orders rightly, harder decisions await. None of those Wardens mentioned a new leader. I don't think they're part of Corypheus's plot to seize the Order. Just us. I brought the Inquisitor. I'm Alistair. It's an honor to meet you, Inquisitor, though I wish it were someplace a bit nicer. Are you the Alistair who fought the Archdemon with the hero of Ferelden? I need to change my name. 
Yes, that was me. War, betrayal, dark spawn, all lots of fun. And made for excellent stories, I'm sure. Nobody cares about that anymore. I answer to Warden Commander Clarell now. Like everyone else. I'll take all the help I can get. I know the Wardens have troubles of their own. I wonder, though, might those troubles have anything to do with Corypheus? When Hawk killed Corypheus, the Wardens thought the matter resolved. But Archdemons don't die from simple injury. I feared Corypheus might have the same power, so I, I started to investigate. I found hints, but no proof. And then, not long after, every Warden in Orlais began to hear the calling. I recall that being a bad thing. But I don't recall you telling me about all this. It was a secret. A very dangerous one. I try to actually keep a few of my oaths to the Wardens. Is the calling some sort of Grey Warden ritual? Well, Wardens are tied to the Darkspawn. We're connected somehow. And eventually that connection poisons you. You get bad dreams, and then you start to hear the music. It calls to you, quiet at first. And then... So loud. You can't bear it. At that point, you say farewell and go into the deep roads to die fighting. In death, sacrifice. And every Grey Warden in Orlais is hearing that right now. They think they're dying. Yes, I think Corypheus caused this somehow. If all the Wardens die, who will stop the next Blight? That's what has them so terrified. And then they do something desperate. Which is, of course, what Corypheus wants. How can Corypheus make all these Wardens hear the calling? I have no idea. I suppose it's part of what he is. Corypheus is tied to the Blight, and not just a product of it like most Darkspawn. Wardens are connected to the Darkspawn too. That's how he seems able to control Wardens who get too close to him. And that's likely what he's doing here as well. Somehow. Is the calling they're hearing real, or is Corypheus mimicking it somehow? I have no idea. Before all this, I'd barely heard of Corypheus. I didn't even know he was supposed to be a magister until I started digging around. But right now, all that matters is the Wardens are acting like they're going to die. You said all the Wardens are hearing the calling. Does that include you? Unfortunately, yes. When I'm talking or fighting, I can almost ignore it. But whenever things are quiet, I can hear it. It's like a song you can't get out of your head. Damned annoying, frankly. So the Wardens are making some last, desperate attack on the Darkspawn. I saw what a Blight did to Ferelden. If Wardens hadn't stopped it, there'd be no more Thedas. Warden Commander Clarell proposed some drastic things, blood magic and such, to prevent further Blights before we die. I protested. Maybe too loudly. And Clarell sent guards and... Well... Here I am. Wardens were gathering here, in the Western Approach. It's an old... Tevinta Ritual Tower. I'm going to investigate. I could use some help. We should get to that Ritual Tower in the Western Approach. Ideally before it lives up to its name. What's it like, being a Warden? Oh, it's wonderful. You get fresh peaches delivered every morning, first choice of local village girls, and bunnies too. Well, maybe it's not that. Not even close to that. I watched my brothers die at Ostagar soon after I joined. I never thought I'd see Wardens kill themselves. Why were the Wardens trying to kill you? When Clarell started talking blood magic and demons to deal with the calling, I said it wasn't a good idea. First, it was awkward silences some coughing. But when I mentioned Corypheus, things really went wild. The Warden Mages said I was interfering. Called me a traitor. Funny how often that happens to me. You were there, weren't you? You helped fight the Archdemon. 
I'm going to be answering that question for the rest of my life. Yes, I was there. It was big. The hero of Ferelden was brave. <laughs> but that was ten years ago. What have you done for us lately, Alistair? New times. New problems. Was the hero of Ferelden involved in all this? No. She left before any of this began. A mission of her own. Something personal. We wardens don't live that long. The calling I spoke of, the real one, before it went crazy. Eventually, it kills her. Thing is, when we killed the Archdemon, we discovered that might not be as set in stone as we thought. So she's searching for a way to end the curse. For us both. Maybe for us all. How can the calling be stopped? Is that actually possible? Grand Enchanter Fiona was once a warden, so I'm told, but had the taint completely drawn out of her. And there was also a warden named Avernus, who extended his life far beyond what should have been possible. So, we looked into it. We weren't going to give up without a fight. And that's when we found a rumor that meant going deep into the West. It wasn't much, but we've done more with less. My love will find a way. I'm certain of it. The way you talk about her, I'm surprised you aren't still together. Oh, <laughs> there was a discussion, believe me. Someone had to look into the rumors about Corypheus. We didn't know what was involved at the time. She was going to stay to help, but we had a lead that couldn't wait. One of us had to go. And when I'm done here, we'll be together again. Forever this time. If she's been looking for a way to stop the calling, perhaps she could help us. I'll give the information to your people in the war room. If nothing else, I'd like to warn her about Corypheus. I got her note. She might be onto something. There's danger, of course. But there's always danger. Thank you for getting word. It's easier to put it out of your mind, to focus on the task at hand. But hearing from her again... Oh, I make his breath. But I do miss that woman. <clears throat> well, let's get on with it. Something you need? We'll talk later. The warden you brought to Skyhold, his name is Alistair? Yes. Didn't you meet him? No, there's no point in that now. He seems a good man. That's true. He does. It's not important. I'm simply musing on the clever tricks the Maker plays. You were once a Grey Warden. Mine is an unusual circumstance, Inquisitor. Normally, one is part of the Order until death. But long ago, I found myself stripped of what made me a Warden. They tried to reinitiate me, but nothing worked. Nor could they figure out how it happened. So I was sent to the Circle of Magi, the first Warden ever to be kicked out. <laughs> Quite the achievement. You sound happy about it. Becoming a Warden seemed like a dream when I was first conscripted. Towards the end, however, my brothers and sisters, they felt I had somehow cheated death. I was glad to leave. It also made me unique in the Circle. I had an opportunity to do more than I ever could as a Warden. You mean you began the Mage Rebellion? I pushed for our vote to free the Circles of Magi. But I cannot claim sole responsibility for what followed. Still, despite all the chaos, I would do it again. What happened, had to happen. I'll leave you to it. That's him. Oh, wow. I, I thought he'd look, I don't know, more demonic. Tentacles and fiery breath. 
He is a normal boy, Alistair. Ah. Uh -huh. And what does he know of how he was made? He knows his father was a good man. I... I thought you deserved that much. <laughs> He's changed you. Don't be absurd. 